Howdy, me fellow Bart here, and welcome. All right, to pick off where we left off from the intro, all we really did was added some background sounds to our test map. Kind of did some brief discussion on the major components of Unreal Engine 4. And all I'm going to do for this video, keep it nice and short, well, howdy howdy, um, just going to add a sprint feature, a basic one, which we can expand on later with a uh, stamina bar and things of that nature if we want. But we're also going to address the fact that we're jumping a little bit too high. So, we're going to do this the simple way for both of them. And we'll add the shift key, left shift, for sprint. And uh, we will shorten the jump. So we are going to go to our character blueprint folder. Go into our player that we created. And, well... We're just going to find a nice clean spot to work with. And the first thing we want to do is look at our character movement. And our character movement, there's a lot of stuff here. The only thing that we're really, really concerned about right now is our max walk speed is set to 600. And our max walk speed crouched is 300. Well, we haven't learned to crouch yet. So let's go ahead and we're going to cut this number in half. And we're going to go to 300 for our max walk speed. And then, if we hit play, we can see that we're moving a lot slower. Don't mind that little bit of jerkiness, that's just a weird artifact. So now, whenever I hit the, sp the left shift key, I want to be able to go faster. So, let's continue with cleaning up things first. We've got base turn and base look and health. Well, what we want to do here is I'm going to select the base turn rate and this is set for default. I'm going to look right here and I'm going to change this to the category of my character. So we can put that and this in the same folder so we can minimize it and we don't have all of our variables there stacked together. And I'm going to create a new category where it says default. I'm just going to change that to player stats. Now it creates a new folder here and that'll go in there. Now while we're at it, we have health. Let's go ahead and create two new variables. We don't have to, but it's going to get you used to creating variables. So hit the plus key right here and we're going to set this new one to be called our sprint speed we need to change that and if we look at our character movement well we need to know what kind of variable this is we can tell that it is a decimal point there so that's going to usually indicate that it's going to be a float so we can change our variable type to a float change our category to player stats and it goes in that same folder. Now since I just created a float when I create a new variable for our walk speed it is still going to be set up as a float and all I have to do then is just change it over to player stats. Compile and save. Now we want to create an event so we need to do a key binding so I'm going to right click and say keyboard left shift which is right here so now when we press the left shift key there I go doing this thing again y'all gotta tell me to stop being a dummy and quit doing that because it's annoying whenever other people do it and I don't want to be the guy that does that so now we are going to create this and we want to do an event of when we press and we release the key so if we were going to do a toggle, which we'll look at the toggle in Crouch, whenever we do our Crouch feature, uh, but for now, I just want to press the key and release the key. So, when we press the key, what we need to do is get a reference to our character movement, and the item we were trying to work on is our max walk speed. So, I want to set max walk speed. And I'm going to copy and paste this. There's two ways you can do that. 
since it's highlighted in orange, I can control C and control V. Or, while I have this one selected, hold my mouse maybe about right here, and control W, and it will do the same thing. It will make a duplicate. Now I can go from release. So whenever I press this, I want to do this. Whenever I release it, I want to do that. And since we created our sprint speed, we need to give it a value. And our sprint is going to be 600. And our walk speed is going to be 300. So that'll bring us back to normal again. So I can actually connect that to there. That needs to go to there. And this can go to there. Looks like a lot of spaghetti. But it's simple. Green goes to green. Blue goes to blue. We're going to ignore the key feature right now. So now, compile and save. And now, as we're walking, we're at our regular walk speed. Hold the left shift, and we sprint. Yay. When I let go, he goes back to walking. Sprint, walk, sprint, walk. Doesn't get much easier than that. So now the jump. Now, in our character movement, you notice we have default land movement, default water movement. Those are going to be something we can play with later. Um, gravity scale, mech acceleration. You've got all kind of different stuff that you can work with, but the jump Z velocity is set to 600. What happens if we bring that down to 300? Cut it in half. And now we hit play. A lot less. Now there's other ways you can actually tweak that so it's smoother. And you're just jumping. Yay. There's much rejoicing. Okay, that's all I wanted to do for the video. Thanks for watching. See ya. No, just kidding. Um, but yeah, that's uh, really interesting. That's all I really wanted to show for this video. And would say probably tweak that up a little bit more, go back to our character movement, jump Z, and it was 600. Let's put it at um, 400 and see how that looks. Then we hit play. A little higher, but not as high as it was before. So I would probably comfortably put it down another 50 and have it set at 350. And that should be a bit more realistic. So, here we go. So, it's not an unrealistic jump. There's a lot of games like The Division where there is no jump feature at all. And I, I'm kind of mixed on that. So, since we're here, and this video only took about seven minutes to create, um, if you walk off the edge of our test map, you pretty much fall forever. So there's two ways we can handle that. And the first way we can handle that is to prevent our player from being able to walk across there. So we can go to our volumes. And I'm going to pan out just a little bit. And there is a thing called a blocking volume. Just left click on it and drag it into the map. And go to our details panel. And I'm going to center it up here. And we'll leave it at zero because we're going to change the height and since we made our map floor 5,000 I'm actually going to move this to 2600 that's going to put it right here at the very very lip of it but we're going to leave the middle on zero and now we can use the scale to get an approximate width and let's look see if it goes all the way to the edge, and it does. So we're at 25, and we want to change the Z height. And I'm just going to go ahead and change this to 5. And then scale it up, or slide it up. So it's 490, we should probably be at 500. So I'm just going to manually change this to 500. So we scaled it up by 5, so we can do 500 here. Now we can continue to recreate that, and sorry for the seesaw motions there, but I can also do Control-C and Control-V to copy and paste, 
and then now move this to 2600 and that has created an invisible wall on two sides and you can do the same thing here another blocking volume and we know that it's going to be well if we look at our other ones they're going to be 1, 25, and 5 so if we look we can do 25, 1, and 5 set it to 500 our position here 2600 and that's going to put it right there on the lip and we can do control C and control V to copy and paste another one in we know that this was 26 so we can do negative 2600 and that'll put it exactly where we want it and so now if our player tries to walk off the edge they're not going to be able to because now there is a invisible wall that prevents us from being able to get out of the map no I can't be a dummy and fall out of the world and it's just enough size in the corners they're mating up with each other that even if you go to the corner you're not going to be able to, to get out we can sprint all the way across here it doesn't matter we can't jump out we can't fall out it blocks us from being able to get out of the world and that's how you can prevent players we all know that one player we all probably do it from time to time as well is uh we get into a map and we just we have to test the borders can I go here we always want to go where we're not supposed to go and we always are trying to push the limits to go where we're not supposed to go and this is going to prevent your players from being able to go where they're not supposed to go corners don't actually overlap they can but they don't um, and that's going to prevent them from falling out of the world and since we have this here and here that needs to be zero but we need to go ahead and take these these are map related stuff including our sound and we're just going to push that up into our map stuff folder and now we're nice and clean and neat and organized and our player can no longer fall out of the world we have sprint we've managed our jump a little bit so again 13 minutes and we've done some really good things here okay so this is a movement thing so again movement is going to be highlighted in blue so let's go ahead and select all that hit C and that's our sprint go to our comment color select that that we already pre-made in the other one and let's just expand this down a little bit now we have everything for our movement is in our movement category and our command stuff is in our command category I mean we could actually come back over here and create another comment block around this command so that way neat and organized now notice how the um, the words are kind of bleeding across each other you can show bubble when zoomed and it'll turn off those individual ones so just click there uncheck on each of them so now whenever you scroll out oh, we don't want you to do that only the the main window area or the comment block section is going to be able to have a big block or whatever above it so now as you're zooming in you know that okay oh, I want movement related stuff so there it is and then we go in ah, okay there's our mouse input our jump input which we changed from our default um, our regular movement inputs and again this is input access move forward input access move right those are hard-coded instead of using one that we create for a key binding 
And again, the reason for doing our own key binding is so we can assign multiple things to the same key, like press E to or press F to open a door, press E to do this, press, you know, but if you walk up to a door, every door may be different, it may be locked, it may be unlocked, you may be referring to something different, and you can reuse that same key input by using variables to go along with it. So, and what I mean by that is um, our sprint key or whatever when we did left shift. If we wanted to set up a condition of are we on the ground or what is our current speed or whatever, we can create variables to actually condition that. But we'll get into that more whenever we actually are setting up the other features for that. So save everything, we're good to go, and we have created a simple map that we can walk around and do things on. Since this video has been really, really short, let's go ahead and add in some other stuff here. This is going to seem like rocket science if you don't know anything about Unreal Engine 4, but if you do, it's maybe old school stuff. But, you know, we, we've got no heads up display. We don't know what our health is. That's the only variable that we have for our player stats that we need to see is our health. So, let's create a player HUD. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to minimize all these folders that I don't need open right now. And if we look at our content, this is our root of our, our folders, our folder structure. Quick note, character. If we want to get to our character folder quickly, let's go ahead and change that to a new color. We can set color and we can apply that as that light blue color. So now, if you're trying to find what folder is, oh, there it is. The light blue one is my character folder. And if I want my animations to be a different color, like orange, we can assign an orange color to it. Um, blueprints, well, that should be blue, right? A new color, let's go ahead and no red, no green will just be blue. So now we have blue is for blueprints, materials. We can assign different colors to each one of them, but if you assign colors to the ones you're going to be going to the most, oh, there's my blueprints folder. Um, oh, animations. Oh, that's where I need to go. Even though we don't have anything there, we will. So that was something nice there. Um, content. What we're going to do is create our first UI or interface or um, data or whatever, but we're just going to call this, make a new folder, we're going to call this our widgets. What the hell is a widget? Well, in here, I'm going to right click and go to user interface, widget blueprint, and we want this to be our player underscore HUD. couple different ways of doing it. I like this way, so now we hit enter we're going to open it up this is your screen this border right here we're not going to get complicated but simply put this area inside here this is your screen this is what you're seeing your view um, all we need to do is create and I'm going to put it in the bottom right hand corner it's what I usually do I do like sometimes having it up here or in the center but I'll show you how we can actually create this, create a binding for it, and have it show up whenever we start playing. So, first thing we need to do is we need a progress bar. But, let's do one thing first, though. Let's grab an image. Okay? And, first off, you see this little sunflower thing. This is our orientation, or our anchor point. I'm going to select the anchor, and I want it to anchor to the bottom right-hand corner of my screen. Now, no matter what, it will, it, what our resolution is or anything, it's always going to be on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. So I'm just going to position this about right there. And I'm going to expand this out a little bit. I'm actually going to make this 200. 
in size. And I'm going to do this at negative 50. No, I don't want negative 50. I want... Yeah, I want negative 50. And negative 200. There. Negative 250. Too much. Um, negative 220. That's good enough. Negative 210. Now, I don't want it to be white. I want it to be see-through and black. First off, compile, save. So, color and opacity. I'm going to click here. I'm going to scroll all the way down over here to black. And I'm going to go to A, which is my alpha. And I'm going to do 0.3. It's going to make it transparent. We can see through it. So, it's going to be less obtrusive. You'll see it more whenever you're in the game. So, that'll work out just fine. So, now we can get our progress bar. I'm going to grab it. And I'm going to anchor it to the bottom right-hand corner as well. Because if we don't, it will be flying in the air somewhere. 40 is a bit tall. Let's try it at, for now, 20. We're going to position this inside of our area. And I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit. Now, to see what it looks like... I don't want to just change all the anchoring and positioning and all that, but to see what it looks like, if we come down to percent, grab right here, and we can move our mouse over, and we can see that, well, it's a blue color. Let's see. 0.75. This is going on a scale of from 0 to 1, but our health is set to 100 by preference. You can put it at 1 if you want to, and it's probably easier, but I don't want to. This is what I like. So, I don't want that blue color. So, we scroll down a little bit. We have appearance. Click on this. And we can change our color to 1 on red, 0 on green, 0 on blue. And I'm going to use this color more often. So, I'm just going to drag it over here so I can quickly use it. And now I can slide this around and see what it looks like whenever it's there. Now, first off, we're not going to see this in, in the map just yet because we haven't told it to show up yet. So, before we get to that point, let's go ahead and finish this and go ahead and display it and show you how to display the correct amount there. So, under our percent, there's a bind button. Click on that and create binding. And I'm going to create a little bit of room to work with here. Just spread these out. And get percent isn't going to tell me what I want to do so I'm going to select that under functions hit F2 and say get player health now you're welcome to ask questions about this of why it has to be done like this but this is what you have to do okay we need to cast to our character in this case it's cast to player underscore base or a third person character or what have you now, when you do that, you're going to have an object reference. This, we need to drag off from there and get player character. Just something you got to do. Okay? Now, what we're, we're able to do now is, let's compile and save. If we look at our player character, the blue folder, here we go, blueprints, blue folder, we want, under player stats, we want this variable. We want to access and get a reading of what this variable is. So in order to do that, we drag from as player base, we want to get health. And there it is right there. We want to get our health, and we want to display that here. But here's the problem. This wants a value from 0 to 1. This is actually going to give us 100. Uh, why can't we just do 0 and 1 for our health? Because I don't like it that way. Yeah, I know. I'm old. I'm grumpy. I do things a certain way. So we can just drag from our health here and type in, if we don't know what our symbols are, 
type in float because we're working with a float float minus float float times a float ah division float divided by we'll change this number to 100 so we're going to get basically the percentage of that from 100 and then plug that into there so we're going to take our health divided by 100 and input it into the return node there we hit compile and save and this is how your getting your health should look we have done nothing in our event graph all we've done is add in a new function from there we go back to our designer and all we have is just that so we're really we're done that's all we need to do to show our player health there but if we hit play it's not on the screen we need to add it to our screen somehow really really easy come back to our player and since we're working off event begin play up here let's create another thing that I like which is a custom event you don't have to do it this way you can actually just come up here and run from there and do the way we did that and I'll show you that way in case you didn't watch the first video which you should even though it's an hour and a half so on event begin play and let's give us a little bit more room to work with in fact we're gonna make it messy at first and then we'll clean it up come down over here to continue on from when we begin to play we remove the cursor and then we want to show our player HUD so what we need to do is create a widget so create W and you're left with that hit enter the widget that we're trying to call is our player HUD and we need to get our owning player so get player controller for individual controller and again we don't have to worry about this being clean it could be as messy as you want right now and it'll bug me until I get this finished and then from here I am going to add to viewport and that's it so now I can try take these right here right click collapse to function and we've created a whole new function and this is going to be well what do we do show HUD now we have created a very small compact clean way of um, doing this we double click on it and we can neaten it up in here just because being neat is awesome unless you look around in my office and see how terrible it looks so there we go compile save and we're done with that so now on event begin play if we go in here hit play we have our health bar in the bottom right hand corner so now we have health but how do we know it's correct it could be wrong well let's go back to our content folder and let's make another new folder we're gonna call this one gadgets this is gonna be our stuff our custom things that we create and inside there blueprints and the first one we want to create is going to be a blueprint class and it is going to be an actor type you're gonna have a bunch of different ones here to work work with but we just want to create an actor anything you place into your map essentially is an actor we're gonna call this our pain underscore pad because we can't use spaces so a pain pad we're gonna use this to test to see if our health bar works so what I want to do is click on here so I have nothing selected I'm gonna add a component of a cube and this is gonna be our base pad it doesn't look much like a pad so let's change our scale and Z for our height to 0.1 and then compost save and click off of it and then we're going to add another component which is going to be called a box collision we're going to call this our um, pain zone call it whatever you want 
and I'm going to change the scale to 1.5 because I don't know why it had to be that way by 1.5 by 0.5 and I'm just going to move it up a little bit so what we've created here this box collision is our our collision zone so we're going to combine save go into our event graph we don't need any of those things so delete them all right Cabal, save now if we right click on our pain zone or our box collision add event come down over here on component begin overlap so when our when something overlaps what is going to overlap well we want our, our player character um, or any character if we want any character which is a player or AI to trigger this event we can just do cast to character and any character that steps on this is going to receive pain they're going to receive damage so we go from our executable and we're going to apply damage simple enough the amount of damage that we're going to create I'm going to do this one more different way here just create a variable damage amount and we're going to change this to a float because our, our unfortunately our our damage is set up as a float so compile and save and let's set it initially to do 25 damage so compile and save again we're going to hold down the control key left click and drag it into our scene and then plug in our damage amount to the base damage and drag from our other actor all the way past this right here to connect to here let me show you something really quickly here as you're starting to put things in here these spaghetti lines will start going all over the place so drag from other actor and type in node and that's going to give you a reroute node there is a hotkey for that I just forgot but node to add a reroute, reroute node now what we can do is select it and we can move these dots around to kind of organize them a little bit and then I can connect that to here so we keep a cleaner path of our our spaghetti to get to our different uh, sections there so now anytime we overlap this with our player it's going to do that we could add a particle effect or an emitter we can add sound to it um, if you want to those are all things that we can add because whenever the player when something is overlapped in this case a character overlaps the pain zone we're going to apply damage we could also play sound at location so if we did play sound at location we could add in our explosion cue location we'll get in just a moment and we could spawn emitter at location and the emitter that we used before was our explosion so we need a location so we can actually grab a reference to our base pad just left click drag it in here and let's go ahead and get world location now we can plug this in here and plug this in here if you want you can add a reroute node in there and oh, how do I get rid of it I can hold down the control key left click and drag it off from there and I'll just come over here and I'll put in a reroute node and let's put it sure looks good and then plug it in there I mean you could just highlight it and put it wherever you want so it's nice neat clean organized it's going to now play a sound and play an emitter when we intersect over the top of it now it's not going to damage our actor just yet 
But let's go ahead and put this into the map. I'm just going to drag it, the blueprint, directly into the map. And I'm going to zero, zero, zero. And if we look, it's there. If we walk over it, it's going to bam. It's going to play the emitter and the sound. So at least we know that that part is working. So we now need to know that A, it is doing damage to us. Another neat trick we can do here is on our damage amount is this right here. It's an eyelid. Click it, now your eye is open. Okay, compile and save. Now if we click on our pain pad, we have a variable here. If we step on this, it's going to do 25. We can change this to whatever number we want. Now we can edit it once it's in the map. If this one is doing 25 and I put another one into my map and I want it to do 50, I can change the number of this one and if I step on this one, it's going to do this damage. Each individual one you can change once it's in the map. I'm going to show you how that can be cool whenever you're actually doing the um, like a, a med kit. And we'll do that quick also. And then we'll wrap up the video. So in our player, we need to now create a new section and we need to do damage. So let's right click and event any damage. So on the event that we take any damage we need to do something. We have our health. Well I need to get a reference to my health. I need to set my health. I need to drag from my health and I need to subtract the amount of damage so we're going to cross over there. We're going to subtract the damage that we receive from our current health and we're going to connect our executable and connect this number right here. So we're going to set our current health to be whatever our health was minus the amount of damage that we took. Now in the next video um, I will cover uh, death animations and how we can die and respawn and checkpoints and so forth will be for the next video. But so now if we once we receive damage we'll start it off with this we'll comment that damage and we want this to be red danger and we'll put another comment block around that and damage systems. We select that again, undo our check mark. So now we can quickly see that this is our damage systems and there's our damage. We'll compile, save, go into our map and now what happens? Watch our health bar and boom! We just lost 25 health and 25 more and 25. Every time we hit it, it's gonna take 25 health away. Um, currently just keep losing health. We have no death system in here. So one thing you need to do, and we'll do really quickly before we wrap up this video, like I said, the next video will actually cover death. Okay? So I want to keep these videos under an hour for each one, even though I could do this in 10 minutes and be done with it. We just want to have minimals done here. Okay, so if in any damage, get our health, but we need to set a condition and we could use variables, I'm not going to at this point, but what we're going to do is drag from here and I'm going to hit the equals, equals, not, wrong one, sorry, equal, equal, and it came up with vector, I don't want vector, equal float, well if it's equal to zero then at this point, we're going to do it like that. If it is equal to, or you can actually drag from here. And if you want to see if it is, you know, if you're creating your death condition, you can do, um, is it less than or equal to? So if, you, if you're if you less than a zero, okay. Well, let's do it this way. We'll do less than zero. If it, for some reason, goes to less than zero, then... It's a question, so we need a branch node. Plug that in there. So if it is less than zero, eh, why don't you line up? You suck. Then we need to do something. And in this case, all we're going to do is 
set our health to zero. This is going to prevent us from ever going below zero on our health. So we have our, our minimum cap. So even though I may step on this thing, or I can step on it and jump. Right now, it'll never go below zero. So, you could always put in here when you're doing this, you can do a print text and tell it to print the amount of health if you wanted to. And that's just as simple as drag from here, print text, and we'll take this, plug it in here. It's green going into pink. It is a text, so it will automatically give you a two text conversion, and it will just keep every time we, oh, let's actually do on faults, let's drag there also. So no matter what, when we get to this point, it's going to print text. Not important at this moment, but now look upper left hand corner of our view screen, it's 75, 50, 25, 0, 0, 0, it'll never go below 0. So quickly, let's go ahead and make a quick health pickup. So I'm going to right click, blueprint, actor, med kit and not going to do anything fancy with uh, our meshes or anything right now I'm just going to go ahead and put in a cube I'm going to scale it um, let's actually change that to that and if we had another material like red or something like that we wanted to use that's that's cool uh, I'm just gonna make it gold I don't care just something to be different and it's gonna be first off let's throw this into the map as you can see it's just gonna be sitting on the floor we don't want that we wanted to raise it up well we could raise it up here but I'm not gonna I'm actually going to raise it up here and let's actually put it at 100 hit compile and save and look at it in the map now hit play walk over here and we can see that it's there it's a little too high but we can't jump over it and hmm. well we have this selected let's scroll down and I want to come to here collision change my collision preset to no collision so this is not going to have any collisions whatsoever to it meaning and let's change it to 80 on our height means we can walk through it now it has no physical barrier it casts a shadow but we can walk through it and that's fine but it looks boring so let's continue editing next thing click off of it add a component we need a box collision and we're just gonna leave it called box and we can actually bring this up to 80 and we can scale it to be pretty close to the size of our object it can be bigger, it can be smaller, I'm just going to do it like that. So compile and save. And I'm going to add one more thing to it. Add another component. Rotating movement. So now, if I compile and save, go in here, and it's spinning. It has no collisions. So now, let's add some functionality to it delete all this stuff go to our box right click add on component begin overlap and what we want to do is 
In this case, we only want this to affect us, the player. So we want to cast to player underscore base, which is the name of our player character, because we need a specific thing to do. Well, first off, we can just tell it to give us health. Well, what if we don't need health? So let's get a reference to our health. So now, does our player actually need the health? Well, okay. We get our health, and what are we going to do now? Huh. Let's see if float, well, let's do less than. So if it is less than 100, and it's a question, so we need a branch node. Plug that into here. Plug our executable in. So now we're continuing on with this question. Is our health less than 100? If it is yes, then we need to do something. If it's false, we don't want it to do anything. Because that would mean their health is 100 or higher. So they don't need anything. So let's go ahead and get a reference to our health and then we also want to set our health and let's go ahead and create a new variable heal amount and make that into a float and what we're going to do is get a reference to that we're going to compile and save our heal amount Let's go ahead and expose it so we can actually set that in here. And we're going to heal by 20, whatever amount we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a reference to our health. We're going to add our float plus float, the heal amount to our health number. And we're going to set our new health to be this but we need to set a cap on there. So we're going to get this new number and we're going to ask is it greater than 100? If it is greater than 100 then we need to come back to our player and set our health to 100. So, the next point is to go ahead and test it out. Now, we don't need it, so nothing's going to happen. We could walk through it all day long. Nothing's going to happen. But, oh no, we took damage. So we come over here, and we healed up, and it'll just keep healing forever, as long as we're standing there, you know, more or less. So we don't want it to do anything. So we're going to do all this, and then at this point, we're going to destroy actor we're gonna destroy it we're gonna blow it up well we're just gonna make it go away so now if we come over here if we don't need it nothing happens we do need it I don't know we need it we did it we got it it's gone forever let's complicate things if we click on it we can see that we can adjust the heal amount so that's cool, but let's add one more thing in here, and new variable, can respawn. Do we want it to respawn or not? It's a yes or no answer, so it needs to be a boolean. Can it respawn? So let's drag this off from here. In fact, let's go ahead and delete it for now. We'll add it back in, in just a moment. But we've gotten to this point where we get to that. So we're asking a question, branch, can respawn, can we respawn? And here's the cool thing about it is, let's click the eyeball, and now we can set that. If we look here, we have a checkbox now for can it respawn, yes or no. If it is unchecked, no, it cannot respawn. If it is checked, it can respawn. So now we can set this one, we can control C and control V and 
move it over here. Then change my snapping back to 10. This one can respawn. This one cannot. We use it once, it goes away. This one, we use it once, it disappears, but then we want it to come back. So let's go ahead and add a new variable. Respawn delay. Make it even more fun. And we're going to change this over to a float. Now, if we cannot respawn, then we can go ahead and destroy our actor. So, if we're not going to respawn, it's just gone. doesn't come back. But if we can respawn, what we want to do is create a condition. We want it to disappear, but we have elements to deal with. So I'm going to first off grab a reference to my cube. And if we're going to respawn, the first thing I need to do is set visibility. I want to make this guy vanish. So we'll leave it unchecked. And I'm going to leave this as an example here. And we know that this one can respawn if we use it. We haven't set up anything else in there. Um, let's go ahead and hit play. And I'm going to do some damage here. Okay, so we use this one. Poof. It's gone forever. But it healed us up all the way. It shouldn't have. But we'll fix that later. Go over here, and it heals us back up. It didn't respawn. The problem is this box collision also. Um, forgot to show that here. Um, if we come over here and we use this, we get healed back up. Even though it's not visible, we're still able to use it. Even though it's invisible, the box collision itself, we need to do something with that as well. So we'll grab a reference to our box collision and set collision enabled. We're going to leave it default to no collision. And then we're going to add in a delay. And since we already have that, we'll get that. Plug that in. Our respawn delay will set to three seconds. So now, after three seconds, we're going to essentially do the same thing, but we'll reverse it. Plug this in here. We're going to set visibility of our med kit. In this case, just a pure cube. Change your visibility to true by checking the box. And then getting a reference to our box collision. Plug this in. And we want to set collision enabled. Query in physics. So now what's going to happen is that one will never come back. This one will come back in three seconds. So we'll use it. Come on. And it's not going to work until it actually comes back, and now we can use it. So you can set up a respawn delay system on it. So now if I, I select this one, uh, we need to click the eyeball, compile, and save. And now our respawn, respawn delay, let's change that to 5 now. So now it won't come back for 5 seconds. So this one, gone forever, no matter how many times we step on it, nothing happens. That one won't work until it physically comes back, and then now it does. Alright, so our... Let's actually take, we left the um, thing in here. We're at 75, 50. This should only heal for 25, but it put us back up to 100. So our heal amount is 20. So 
We're checking to see if we need it by seeing if our health is less than 100. Then we get our health, subtract the heal amount, or I'm sorry, we're healing. So get our health plus this, plus 20. Don't know why it healed plus 50. No. Um, setting our health. Oh, because we didn't finish that. So we've got all this stuff right here. We need to move that over just a little bit. We forgot our branch node. So we asked the question. Set it to there. So if it is greater than 100, then set it to there. Now, if it is not less than, we need to skip past there and go to here. So to make it neater, I'm going to come down here, add in a reroute node, and just kind of move it around a little bit. Drag from here. Just type in node and hit enter. There's a hotkey for that, I just am not remembering it. We're going to plug it directly in here. So we're asking, is it greater than 100? If it's not, then just go ahead and do this stuff. Finish handling the rest of our business. But if it is, we need to set our health to 100 for our player, and then we can continue our business. So that's going to now fix our little bug. So we're at 25 health. We recovered 25 health only. Thank you. So we're now at 20 health. We use that. And there we go. Respawns. Boom. And get it. We could have told it to print our health if we wanted to, but we can see our health bar. You can add a power-up sound, like, ooh, you know, whatever sound you, effect you want whenever you gain your health. So now this one's just going to keep respawning every five seconds. You can set it to 500 seconds, whatever. Um, you could set your variable heal amount. If you wanted to, you could actually um, create a binding and all kind of fancy stuff. So you can see this med kit gives me 50, this one gives me 25. And that would be simply, you know, add another component, text, render. And we'll just leave it at text render. We'll get this, compile, save, and we need to know what to put in here for our text. But first off, let's go ahead and get our text in the right location. Change it to center. We'll just put it right there, compile, save. So now when we look at it, we'll just see the word text right above it. You could put it on it, whatever. But let's just go ahead and give a binding to that text. So how do we do that? Hmm. Well, let's go to our event graph and let's do right click, event, begin, play. So when we first start off, get a reference to our text render and we need to set our text. So set text. What are we going to put in that text? Well, we want to get our heal amount. And we want it to go in there. Let's move this a little bit. Now we can plug green into pink. In this case, it gives us an automatic conversion of float to text. So now it is going to put our heal amount on begin play, we can see that it does 20 um, healing. If this one does 50 healing, we hit play. The left one does 20, the right one does 50. That's just a neat little way that you can 
um, identify your healing if you want to and put a, a physical number on it. You can put it on all sides, you can put it wherever you want. But you know what? It's a good way of saying, hey, well, I want to get the little med kit or the big bed kit or whatever, and they're just going to work. They're not going to work if you don't need them. So I need it. Oh, I just got damaged again. Oh, got damaged again. Oh no, I'm about to die. And there we go. The most effective way to learn blueprint programming is to watch all of my videos. Um, that and just experiment. I mean, seriously, it, it's one of those things where... Which I'm going to get rid of these two now. It's only as complicated as you really think it is. Variables. And that's why I, I you know, mentioned the 7P method. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. And it's just that. Um, if you think and you break it down, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to receive damage here and handle my, my damage handling event. So event any damage. Well, what am I going to do with that? I get the damage that I received and I need to subtract my health from there. So that's cool. But I need to see if our health is less than zero. And if it is, then I need to cap it at zero, so it never goes below zero. But then if I want to set up a death, which I'll do that in the next video, um, and do an actual death event, then I can actually come over here and create another thing that I love doing, and it's custom events. Instead of functions, I can right click and type in cust, and it's going to already have it highlighted, add custom event. And this custom event that I want to create is called death. And now, anything that I want to run off of this will happen. So now, whenever I get to right here, and I realize that my health is less than zero, I'm setting my health to zero, um, now I can just type in death. And it's going to run anything and everything that is in that death custom event that I created. And again, it's just one of those things where, um, which I'm actually going to leave that out because I'll save that for the next video. Um, what is it you're trying to do? Think about what am I trying to do? I'm trying to make my character jump. I'm trying to make my character crouch. I'm trying to make my character, his head t go on fire. I want to make fire come out of my butt, you know? I'm just being weird now, but if I want to make fire come from my head, how do I want it to happen? What event causes it to happen? Um, if I received a certain amount of damage, and, hmm, well, I've got my event any damage, that's handling my incoming damage event. So, let's, let's try it from there. If my health drops to below 30, then my head goes on fire. Sounds dumb, I know. But it's the whole point is, how do I make that happen? Well, we're handling our incoming damage here with the event any damage. We're asking right here, is it below zero? Well, no, it's it's not going to be below zero, but we do need to check to see if our health... Let's grab it down here, and we'll do float is less than... We'll put the number 30 in here. So forget if our health is less than 30. We're asking a question, so we need another branch node. So we plug this in here, and we're going to run it off of this one, and I'm just going to drag from false to here. So if it's less than 30, then let's go ahead and create that custom event. Custom event, head, fire, whatever, you know. So then we can actually do, if it's less than 30, we're going to run that custom event. So now, whenever our head goes on fire, we need to spawn emitter at a location or attached. We could actually do attached if we want to. But in this case I'm going to do spawn emitter at location and I'm going to show you how you can get the location for your head. 
Um, there's a couple different ways of doing it. Simplest way is grab a reference from our mesh, which is our, our player character, our, our physical embodiment. And, well, let's get a socket location. A socket is, think of like a joint, like your hip bone or your neck bone or spine one, spine two, what have you. And we're gonna do fire. So what is the name that we need? Let's go to our actual player mesh skeleton and look. We have all these different things right here to, to look at. Well, we can click on our head and see, okay, head, neck. Let's do head. And, hmm. It's going to put it right in the middle of our head, and that might be okay. And this is going to come in handy if we want to add a gun or a sword or a knife or a weapon to our hands. It would be the same basic principle here. So I'm going to select head, and I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to select add socket. And then I'm going to click on that socket. We don't want to call it head socket. So let's hit F2 and call it fire underscore head. It's our fire head. And then I'm going to go to my transform for moving it. And I want it to come up to right here and spawn at the top of our head. That's where I want my fire to spawn from. Let's actually move it to right there. So now we actually have a location for it to go to. Let's hit save. And now we have a custom socket for our head. If we were trying to apply a hat, it would be the same thing by having that socket there. And if you want to see how it looks, you can right click and add preview asset of fire or of a mesh or whatever else so this is what it's going to look like whenever we actually um, do it so I'm going to hold down on my left mouse button and then hit delete and I'm going to get rid of the, uh, the emitter in here so let's save and close that and now we need to use that and you need to know exactly what it was called and ours was exactly called fire underscore head copy selected socket or control C and then control V is not going to do it because you suck donkey nuts but we know that it's capital F let's just get rid of all this crap capital F for fire and capital H for head. So firehead is the name of our socket for that to, to go to. The best way to do it is just remember what it is and copy it in there. So make sure we go ahead and do a save all. Get everything saved. And let's look at that. So if our health is below 30, we're going to set our head on fire. And it's just a matter of you know, think about what you're trying to do. But, oh no. Guess what? It spawned there, but it stayed up in the air. It didn't stay attached to our head. So how can we make that stay there? Well, instead of spawning it at a location, let's actually spawn emitter attached. We want to attach it to something the location and our attach point is actually going to be let's go ahead and do that and it will be the actual bone name or socket name attached to component well we needed our mesh component right there so let's plug that in there we know that it was the fire. We can set our scale so it's not quite as big. We'll do 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5 so it's half the size. Location and rotation we don't need so much. And um, we'll come back to that in just a second. So by doing that we, we're doing the same basic thing but we want to attach it to the player.
So now it's attached to the player's head and it'll stay there. How do you get rid of it? Well, that's a different story. So then if it's there, another thing we can do here is let's go ahead and promote to variable and see if we can do it this way. Variable's name is flaming head. And it's a reference. So we get our flaming head reference. And we could always create another custom event to get rid of it. Um, custom fire head stop. Really creative and original names here, I know, right? And then get a reference to and Unpin component. Deactivate, probably. Um, detach from component. Um, yeah, I don't. Um, let's try deactivate. Probably not going to work, but you know what? Whatever. So we need a condition of what happens now to get that. Um, so we can grab this right here and say if it is greater than fifty. So again, we're asking a question. The branch, plug it in, plug it defaults, and this is going to keep checking these different states right here. And we call this one Firehead Stop. Really creative name. And we'll try Firehead Stop. I'm pretty sure the deactivate is not going to work for that component, but I'll have to try to remember what the actual was. So there, we're on fire. And yes, yes, I know it didn't work. Um, we also forgot in since we added in the um, in the gadgets, we added in the floating text. We need to come back over here and make it go away as well. minor little thing and that's just a matter of taking that we're setting visibility of the text reader and just plug it back in here as well and turn it back on so that was a minor little thing there, and it did not like the fact that um, you used deactivate. So let's um, make sure our error is gone. But I mean, seriously, that's how you learn things, in, is to actually try it. So, no errors. So... component. And again, I've never tried this before, so yeah. There's other ways of doing it, but doing it this way, I've never done it, so you know what? 
I'm going to try it. And that obviously did not work. Come on, you respawn. There we go. And it did not like it. Error, destroy component. Just dump you. This is definitely not the best way to do it, but it will get rid of it temporarily. Um, I want to wrap up the video because we're over the one hour mark, but um, this is not the right way to do it. Again, it's not something that I would leave in here anyway. So we're on fire. Yeah, I didn't like that either. All right, so we'll 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 dump this for now. That was just a you know an example of how we can add things in and do things. Think about what you're trying to accomplish, and then experiment until it actually works. Probably gonna stay on here and do more. Then, if I have more time then I'd be glad to, to resolve that issue. And it, it wouldn't take me but a few minutes to actually figure it out. But past my nap time. Yeah, it's 2.30 in the afternoon. But I'm old. That's why I take naps. So since I don't need this, this med kit, this glorious med kit, I, I can't pick it up because I don't need it. No matter how many times I walk through it. And because it's gone, I can't pick it up. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of patience to be able to get through some of the issues that come up. But, you know, it's just a matter of experiment. Try things. So now we have a nice, clean, neat, organized blueprint that we can work with. Oh, where's my command stuff? It's all over here. My movement input there. Damage systems right there. Um, weapons could fall under the damage system, so I could just expand that out and do what I want to do. Um, if you wanted this to be a, a red cross, you could make your own custom static meshes. Um, you could use asset packs and so forth. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the editor. And everything that I'm going to show in this series is just to try to get people into the right frame of mind of being able to create things and show that it's not rocket science, it's not voodoo, it's not magic. Um, you can do it if you just sit there and try. Experiment, play around with things, see what you can come up with. But if you have issues, go to a Discord channel like mine and ask questions. Um, go to Unreal Slackers. Go to other uh, Discord channels and actually check things out. But in the, um, the nature of everything being free for this series, ignore all the thousands of projects that I've got going. You look, I've got a lot of freaking assets. And again, this is not all of my assets. I have more. Um, so, <coughs> what I recommend doing is clicking on the marketplace. Don't get wrapped up and excited by these wonderful, cool, amazing things you're going to see in there. Oh, I could just buy this, and it would be great. Oh, look, I can get this advanced weapons pack, and, and it'll and everything will be great. No, not always. Um, the problem with some of these things, like now map stuff and sounds and animations and certain of them yeah just no brainers but this sounds awesome connected wormholes hmm make your own i'm not saying that this is not a good asset pack it's 35 bucks worst case scenario you buy it you learn how to do it you make your own but trying to use ops other people's stuff and I'll say stuff instead of what I normally say. Trying to use other people's stuff doesn't always work too well. It could work great. It could be a horrible nightmare. More often than not, you're going to waste more time with 
somebody else's asset pack for doing a wormhole. What is a wormhole? It's a freaking teleporter. I've got videos out there showing how to create teleports. Um, and when we do our death system on the next video in this series, it's going to actually show how to respawn and it'll be a checkpoint system as well so you can clear checkpoints and if you die you go back to the last checkpoint you went to um, it's a very simple system and a wormhole is only a teleporter with a fancy particle effect over it so I'm not saying that this is a bad asset pack to get I'm just saying there may be a lot of crap involved in trying to make that work for your project and if you are having a hard time grasping simple things like me, like remembering to eat sometimes, or you know, whatever. Um, yeah, so sometimes it's more difficult to try to integrate somebody else's stuff into your own project. Um, that's why, like, my simple multiplayer student template is simple and easy to work with. And yeah, we'll get into that in the next video, and or in the video after that, and the one after that, and the one after that. Because it's something that I sell to make money, and that I can't put on the marketplace because it uses a third-party plugin. Blah 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 blah. We'll cover that later on. But 20 bucks, and you got a menu system with a way to connect your buddies to join your game and play through Steam. Um, but back to the marketplace thing. Go to the marketplace, look around, but don't get crazy. Before you spend, hello love, um, any money on Assassin Girl right there. Sorry, I'm an old school pervert. Uh, <clears throat> get carried away there. Like, oh crap. Escalators. Those are awesome. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, make your own. Not that hard. Um, go in here, and if you look, there's a section called Free. Click, uh, connect that. Or connect or click that either one. Um, holy crap! Open flight on a real. No idea what that is. Procedural environment generator. Okay, awesome. Um, forget about all that. Let's go with um, browse animations. Okay, because in the next one we're gonna need some animations. So I'm gonna go into sort by price low to high free mocap basics now currently right now and this is gonna suck for you guys because um, it's no longer free <laughs> and I've been telling about it get it while it's free and it's no longer free generic NPC anim pack six dollars damn sure worth getting mocap stuff's good too don't get me wrong but I use this one quite a bit. It's good. And it's six bucks. If you're going to buy one, get that one. I'm sure he'll appreciate the extra few bucks. Um, I haven't tried this one yet. Um, Mocap Basics. Sure, go ahead and get it. Um, I don't really like using their stuff. I don't have anything against them. It's just their format, I'm just not crazy about just because I'm old and weird. But it's good stuff. Their animations are usually really good. Um, another one that I use is definitely not that one. Um, scrolling down. Well, the animation starter pack, and it, it's not even showing right here, um, but I'll show you how to get that soon, in just a second here. But uh, generic NPC anim pack is really good. I use it all the time. And. If you're going to spend a few bucks on another one, well, it'll take me forever to, to sort through it. But the Animation Starter Pack is another one that's free, that is a definite must have. If you go to Free Epic Games Content, and scroll through. There's a lot of really cool, pretty stuff. Avoid it. Yes, I know it says own for all these for me, but avoid them and avoid the Paragon stuff. It's something for much later once you're a bunch more advanced because they're not quite as easy to adapt over as you would think. Even though they're free, they'll just waste your hard drive space. And they're awesome, don't get me wrong, but 
it's not something for the novice. Well, anywho, um, just type in here animation starter because you want the animation starter pack, and it is from Epic Games, and it is free. So get that one. This is one that we're going to be using quite a bit for the animations. And we're going to be using some animations from this pack in the next video. So it's free. You might as well get it. And while you're at it, if you want to browse other free stuff, um, everybody likes guns. Everybody wants weapons. Um, they used to have it specifically separated but check through the you know, get those two animation packs that are free um, yeah it used to have weapons as a separate category then sort by price low to high and there's some stuff you can take a look at Broadcast Studio. I haven't looked at that one yet. Huh. Okay. This will be a good example because I kind of want that one. And I hadn't seen it before. I've got that one, the, the movie props. You can see I own a lot of these. Sci-fi cockpits, the industry props pack. There's some really good props in here and some other stuff like that that are easy to work with and good to use. So you find stuff that you want that's free. Go ahead and add to cart. And then when you're you're done sorting through all the stuff that you want for, to get, go to your shopping cart. And this is for getting it free. It says zero right there. And then hit checkout. If you haven't already set up a credit card with, with them, you can. In fact, the, the credit card that's associated with my account um, has been cut into shreds. So that number doesn't even exist anymore. Thanks to some ass clowns stealing my freaking debit card information. But that is Broadcast Studios. And then you go to your library. Scroll past all of my lovely freaking assets that, or projects that I've got working on. Um, and it was Broadcast. There's Ballistic. Battle Royale template. Yeah, if you want to make a Battle Royale game, there you go. Battle Royale in a box. And I have one, a demo of it, in linked in my Discord channel called Fart Night. As much as I love Fortnite, which I don't. <laughs> um, hmm, what the hell was it? Uh, Ballistics, Battle Royale, Broadcast Studio. So all you have to do is just pip, click on it and add it to project. And that's it. It will download it and add it to your project. If you want to know information about it, Broadcast Studio... This is good with 423 and 424. There is ways, and I'll show in a, in a different video, of how to actually add in prod, you know, stuff like this, that if you're using 425 and it doesn't say 425, you can add it in there. Sometimes it's not really going to work reverse compatible, but, yeah. So this is the one that we just uh, downloaded, or just added to the, the cart free. Um, that's Broadcast Studio. This would be a good one to set up, put our character in, and have him sit in the chair. We'll do sitting animations and, and that kind of stuff. Pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to the project. So hit add to project. This is the one we were doing. Add to project. And it's going to download, which means it's going to mess up my streaming. So uh, 400 megabytes, 0.4 gigs. So yeah. In the next video, I'm going to go ahead and take a break. i got to take care of a few things around the house. And when we come back, I will actually we'll take a look at this because I see some things that we can actually play around with um, besides chairs, the, the TV monitors, and we have some nice pre-made sets that we can actually make this couch where our player can sit down in it and we can have other idle characters sitting down there as well. Um make that where we can sit on it yeah so I'm gonna take a break for a little bit you guys check in with me on discord um, link is in the video description and um, 
I got to take care of a few things. I got to do some laundry and that kind of crap. Um, household stuff. You know, it's the weekend. Might as well, right? Um, 